From your grade 3 to grade 7, you have studied about the different organisms and their easily observable characteristics. This vlog will introduce you to the topic and to the concept of biodiversity, specifically the variety of organisms living on Earth. Hello my dear students! Kumusta kayo? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Teen, your science teacher for today. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science Day. We are now on week 5 of quarter 4 in Science 8 and for today's topic, we are going to discuss about biodiversity. The two most essential learning competencies in this topic are number one, explain the concept of species. Number two, classify organisms using hierarchical taxonomic system. Banana, gumamela, fishes, snakes, plants, animals, how are they classified? For today's topic, we are going to discuss about biodiversity, specifically the variety of organisms living on Earth. This will discuss how they are classified and named. It will also show the differences and similarities among organisms. And it will describe the different groups to which these organisms belong. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity, so galing ito sa dalawang words, biological and diversity. Kaya naging biodiversity. Meron tayong tatlong level ng biodiversity. Number one is the species diversity. The other one is genetic diversity. And the third one is the ecosystem diversity. Siyempre, pag sinabi nating species diversity, it refers to the different kinds of organisms. While the genetic diversity, this is the genetic information that organisms contain. And ecosystem diversity, it refers to the different kinds of places where organisms live and the interconnections that bind these organisms together. Kung napakadaming organisms ang kaya mong bilangin sa mundo, malalaman mo ba ang tungkol sa mga ito? Do organisms have to be classified? Bakit kaya? Okay, let us discuss the different levels of classification. Okay, let us define first taxonomy. So, ano pag sinabi natin taxonomy? Okay, taxonomy, it literally means arrangement law. Taxonomy... This is the science of classifying organisms to construct internationally shared classification systems with each organism placed into more and more inclusive groupings. Ngayon, isipin nyo kapag pumupunta kayo sa mga grocery store, sa mga supermarket, paano ba naka-arrange yung mga product nila? Halu-halo ba? O by group? One large space is divided into departments, such as produce, dairy, meats. Then each department further divides into aisles. Then each aisle into categories and brands. And then finally, a single product. Okay, ayan. Di ba pag pumupunta tayo sa mga grocery store, magkakahiwalay kung nasaan dyan yung mga meats, ano yung mga karne, mga isda, o kaya naman yung mga dairy, mga meats, ay matichirya. And then, pag pumunta ka sa isang aisle, nandun lahat, for example, lahat ng oil. Okay, at lahat ng oil may iba't ibang brand, may iba't ibang product, pero magkakasama pa rin yung bawat product na yun. So, for example, dito sa mga delatang to, magkakasama lahat ng mega, lahat na century tuna, pero hindi mo makikita na, oh, lang at lahat ay delata, pero hindi mo makikita na magkakahiwala yung mga brand na yun. Okay? This organization, from larger to smaller, more specific categories, is called the hierarchical system. 
Again, when we say taxonomy, this is a part of science that focuses on naming and classifying or grouping organisms. So, kung nakikilala niyo si Carolus Linnaeus, ito siya. He is a Swedish naturalist, si, ayan na nga, si Carolus Linnaeus, who is considered to be the father of taxonomy. Okay? Noong 1700s, nag-develop siya kung paano ba uh, mapapangalanan at maio-organize yung bawat species na pinag-aaralan natin today. His two most important contributions to taxonomy were number one is the hierarchical classification system and the other one is the system of binomial nomenclature. Ito na nga yung a two-part naming method. Okay, sa modern taxonomy classification system, meron tayong eight main levels from the most inclusive to the most exclusive. At gusto ko natandaan nyo ang acronym na to. DKS COF GS So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Ito yung eight main uh, levels ng taxonomy classification system. D stands for the domain K for the kingdom P for the phylum C for class O for order F for family, G for genus, and S for species. Okay, for example, Domain Eukarya, Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Chordata, Class Mammalia, Order Primata, Family Hominidae, Genus for Homo, and Species for Sapiens. Yung mga scientists, gumagamit sila ng mga scientific names para maiwasan yun kung yung confusion sa kanila, especially kapag gumagamit ng mga common names sa mga organism. Okay, bakit? Kasi, uh, may, yung mga common names ng mga organisms ay nagbabago kasi siya according dun sa language na ginagamit ng bawat bansa. Kasi, bawat bansa nagkakaroon ng pagkakaiba-iba sa mga common names. Kaya naman, meron tayong scientific names which is parang ito yung nagiging universal names na nakakatulong doon sa mga scientists para i-clarify nila yung particular organisms na tinutukoy nila sa bawat ginagawa or ina-investigate nila. Scientific names also provide the identity of organisms and indicate their true nature. Yung tinatawag natin na domain, ito yung may pinakamalaking category kung saan yung mga organisms ay classify. And syempre, susundan ito ng kingdom na kung saan ito namang kingdom ay divided into various phylum. At yung phylum, kinukonsist naman siya ng napakadaming classes, each class with several orders. Okay, and syempre, yung order, meron naman siyang iba't ibang family. At yung family ay nagkukonsist naman to ng napakadaming genera at ang bawat genus ay nagkocomprise naman ng maliliit na group of various species. Pag sinabi nating species, this is a group of similar organisms and capable of reproducing their own kind. Example, tayo. Tayo ay isang uri ng species. Yung mga milkfish, yung bangos, yung mga dog, waling-waling. Okay, uh, kung ano mang plant, anong specific man yan. So, that is an example of species. Yung mga scientists, they came up with the three domain system classification. Before, dinidivide lang in, it into two. So, dalawa lang ang classification dati. Ito yung tinatawag natin na eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So, alam naman natin na kapag eukaryotes, in eukaryotes, these materials are enclosed into a membrane. membrane. However, the prokaryotes are not. Most of the prokaryotes are tiny unicellular at ito yung tinatawag na microorganisms. A lot of eukaryotes, they are multicellular in contrast with the microorganisms or the prokaryotes na tiny and unicellular. Recently, prokaryotes have been divided into two domains. Ito yung tinatawag natin na archaea and bacteria. So, ito namang eukaryote, na-retain lang siya. Kaya ngayon, ito yung kino, ito nagkukonsist ng pangatlong domain, which is yung tinatawag natin na eukarya. Na ang kasama dito ay nandito yung ating protis, fungi, plants, and animals. What you see in this table is the sample classification of organisms. So, meron tayong ditong category, and then 
we have the kingdom phylum plus order family <laughs> genus species and on the other hand we have the different kinds of different classes of different classification of organisms we have the domesticated cat dog bangus wolf and lion so let us have uh, the dog for example so ang dog kabilang siya sa kingdom na animalia phylum so belong to sa chordata and then ang class niya is mammalia ang order niya ay carnivora family canidae genus canis and the species is familiaris kaya naman ang dog meron tayong scientific name na canis familiaris and take note if you're going to write the scientific name of a species so for example dog meron tayong scientific name na canis familiaris so combination siya ng genus at siya ng species and if you're going to write the, the scientific name the first word is in capital letter and then the second word is in small letter just like this canis familiaris scientific name for dog Okay, let us talk about the Archaea domain. So, under the Archaea domain, we have the kingdom Archaea bacteria. Organisms that belong to this kingdom are all microscopic. Ibig sabihin, hindi natin ito makikita using our naked eye. We can only see this using microscope. Kasi nga, they are very tiny objects and tiny species. They, they live in various places, some even in the most severe environments. Examples of this are metanogens, Holophiles and thermophiles. And the other domain is we have the bacteria domain. So, belong naman to sa kingdom Eubacteria. Okay, members of Eubacteria are unicellular and microscopic. Napakaliliit din yan. And they are referred to as true bacteria. And they are usually called the bacteria group. Yes, bacteria talaga to, legit na bacteria. Their cell walls are made of peptidoglycan. It is a carbohydrate. Alam naman natin na bacteria consists of very diverse group. And they are varied in shape. Yes, magkakaiba ang shape ng bawat bacteria. At uh, ma makikita natin ang bacteria sa ating mga paligid. Nandiyan yan sa soil, sa air, sa water, or pwede rin makita natin siya sa mga spoiled food. A lot of human diseases are caused by bacteria. Yung mga tumutubong pimple sa inyo, bacteria yan. At ang tawag natin dyan sa bacteria na yan is Propylibacterium acnes. Yes, yan yung mga bacteria na nagkakos ng pimples. And syempre, meron din tayong tuberculosis na tinatawag na sakit. So, ano yung bacteria na meron din dito? Ang tawag natin sa bacteria na nagkakos ng tuberculosis, which is a common disease in Philippines, is the Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now, let us talk about the protist. So, members of Kingdom Protista come from unrelated ancestors. So, yung groupings na to ay nire-refer naman ng mga biologists as artificial grouping. Bakit daw? So, the inclusion of large number of unicellular organisms under this kingdom is just for convenience. Yung protist, kinaklasify to into three groups. Ano yung tatlong yun? Uh, pwede siyang phototrops, heterotrops, and sporozoa. So, alam naman natin na kapag prototrops, they can make their own food. Ang example niyan is yung mga plants. At pag sinabi naman natin heterotrops, ito naman yung mga organisms that they feed on other organisms. So, ibig sabihin, mabubuhay lang sila kapag kumain sila ng ibang organisms. Okay, yung algae, dinoflagellates, and euglenoids, they're considered as phototrops. They have chlorophyll and they can make their own food. Okay, kung minsan kapag kumakain kayo or pag nakakita kayo ng medyo luma na nakol, meron tong medyo parang orange. Okay naman sa mga tinapay, kapag medyo natagalan na, may makikita kayo dyan ng mga gray to black or white spots. Ano, yung parang medyo parang may amag-amag na. O kaya naman yung mga kabute, oo, yung mga mushroom na nakukuha ng mga tatay nyo or ng lolo nyo sa mga kakahuyan. O kaya naman yung gis na nilalagay natin sa bread kapag gumagawa tayo ng tinapay. Ang tawag naman natin dito ay fungi. Okay, at kabilang ito nga sa kingdom na fungi. Okay, ang fungi, wala silang chlorophyll. Meaning to say, they cannot make their own food. Paano naman sila nabubuhay? Okay, some of them are parasites. Ibig sabihin, they can only survive by living in a host organisms. And others, they are feed on decaying matter. 
Okay, and they are also known as the saprophytes. Okay, and ang fungi, they also have cell walls but are made up of chitin. Okay, kaya nga, di ba, bakit nabubuhay itong mga amag-amag sa mga tinapay na sirana? Because they can only survive by living on a host organisms or nabubuhay sila sa mga decaying organisms na. Okay, let us now proceed with the plant kingdom. Okay, kanina alam nyo na ang plant ay kabilang sa eukaryote group. And they are multicellular because and because they have chlorophyll, they can make their own food. So tandaan na sa plant kingdom, binubuo naman to ng two big groups. At ito ang tinatawag natin na non-vascular plant and vascular plant. So ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Kapag sinabi nating non-vascular plant, meaning to say, these are plants that do not have tissues to transport water and food. And when we say vascular plant, they have transport system. Have you noticed green patches attached to stones or walls during rainy season? Or in moist, wet, or shady areas? So, ang tawag natin sa mga halaman na yun ay mga non-vascular plants. Example ng mga non-vascular plants, we have the liverworts, mosses, and hernworts. These are non-vascular plants. So, itong mga non-vascular plants, nakatouch lang ito sa mga stone at sa mga walls, gamit yung kanilang root-like na tinatawag natin na rhizoids. So, yung rhizoids, so ito lang yung means nila para makaabsorb sila ng nutrients and food from other materials. And syempre, itong mga non-vascular plants, wala din naman silang true stem and leaves. And of course, we have the vascular plants. So, kabalik na rin to ng non-vascular plants. Dito, meron silang transport system. Meron na ditong true stems, roots, and leaves uh, where the nutrients can pass through. And of course, under the vascular plants, we have two different kinds. The gymnosperms and the angiosperms. So, what is the difference between the two? When we say gymnosperms, these are the non-flowering plant. And the angiosperms are the flowering plants. So let's start first with the gymnosperm. Examples of gymnosperms are the conifers, cycads, ginkgos, and nitophytes. Now, how about the angiosperms? So the angiosperms, they are also known as the flowering plants. They are also called as the flowering plants since flowers as well as fruits are involved in the reproduction and development. And remember na sa angiosperms, they, are, they can be classified according to their lifespan. Meron tayong tinatawag na annual, binyal, and perennial. Annuals live for year or one growing season like corn and rice. Samantalang ito naman tinatawag natin na binyals, ibig sabihin, they develop roots, stems, and leaves during the first year, produce seeds on the second year, then die. And we also have the perennials. Perennials live for many years, usually producing woody stems like chichirica, bamboo, and trees. Okay, let's now proceed with the animal kingdom. Animals different size and shapes. Remember that animals can be classified into two categories. The invertebrate animals and the vertebrate animals. And alam natin na kapag invertebrate animals, ito yung mga no backbone. At kapag vertebrate animals, ito naman yung mga hayop na mero backbone. In this part, you will discover the diverse characteristics, uses, and roles in the environment of 9 in about 35 animal phyla. Okay, number one, we have the sponges. Ang sponges, kabilang din ito sa animal kingdom, syempre, under invertebrate animals, and kabilang ito sa phylum porifera. They live in shallow and deep oceans. The young of sponges are motile, while adults are attached to solid materials like rocks. The body of hard sponge is supported by skeleton called spicules made of either glass-like silica or calcium carbonate, a network of protein fibers supports soft sponges. This is one used for bathing and washing. And the other one, we have the Nidarians. And Nidarians are belong to the Phylum Cytharia. Members of Phylum Cytharia consist of animals whose tentacles contain stinging cells called nematocysts. 
These poison-filled structures are used for defense and to capture their prey or food. Once released, this can be painful and even fatal, like an attack by jellyfishes. And the other one, we have the flatworms. The flatworm belongs to Phyloplatyhelminths, which means in Greek, it is platys, which means flat, and helminths, which means worm. As their name suggests, they are flat and ribbon-like organisms. Flatworms are found in fresh water, in wet places, and marine waters. They include the free-living or non-parasitic worms, the parasitic flukes, and the tapeworm group. Planaria is an example of a free-living platform. It lives in moist surfaces, under rocks and pans, rivers, and even aquariums. Flukes are parasites that live in other animals, including humans. And the other one is what we call the roundworms. Roundworms are member of Phylum nematoda. Compared to flatworms, roundworms are also known as nematodes, have long, cylindrical, and slender bodies. Some roundworms are free-living while others are parasites of animals and plants. The free-living ones are important as they are composers in some soil in both marine and fresh waters. The other one is segmented worm. The third group of worms which belong to Phylum annelida. Also known as annelids, these animals are characterized by segmented or repeated body parts. This makes them move easily and with flexibility. Annelids are mostly found crawling in moist soil or swimming in sea and fresh waters. Examples of annelids are the earthworms, folicates, and liches. Next, we have the mollusk. And mollusk belong to Phylum mollusca. They are soft-bodied invertebrates with most of them covered by a shell. They have complex respiratory, reproductive, circulatory, digestive, and excretory systems functioning together for their survival. The mollusk body has three parts, a muscular food for locomotion, a mantle that produces the shell, and visceral mass that contains their internal organs. Mollusks consist of three classes, the gastropods, bivalves, and cephalopods. Next, we have the echinoderms, which belongs to the phylum echinodermata. You can be fascinated by the star-shaped sea star or spine-tutted sea urchin and the appearance of the sun dollar. Along with the brittle star and the sea cucumber, they belong to phylum echinodermata. All echinoderms are found in the marine environment. Sea lily, another echinoderm, is rooted in the sun and the bottom of the sea while sea cucumber burrows in mud of deep or shallow waters. Have you observed what grasshoppers, centipedes, and crabs have in common? So, kung papansin niyo yung mga hayop na to, so, mapapansin niyo na they have jointed legs. At ang tawag naman natin dito sa mga animals na to are arthropods, and they belong to phylum arthropoda. The group is considered the most successful of all animal phyla as they are present in almost all types of habitats. There are arthropods that can walk, crawl, some can fly, while others swim in salty and fresh waters. The arthropods, they're also grouped based on the type of exoskeleton. Meron tayong tinatawag na crustaceans. Ito naman yung mga arthropods na makikita natin sa mga dagat, kagaya ng shrimps, ng lobsters, ng barnacles, na water fleas at saka ng frogs. Meron din tayong tinatawag na arachnids. And we also have the millipedes and the centipedes. And we also have the insects. Insects form the largest group among arthropods. The other one is what we call the chordates. Animals belonging to phylum chordata have four characteristics that are present in any stages in their life cycle. These are the notochord, the dorsal hollow nerve cord, gill slits, and a post-anal tail. After the invertebrate animals, we also have the vertebrate animals. So, kabalik na ng invertebrate. So, sa vertebrate animals naman, these are animals that have backbone. Most of the vertebrates are sea and land dwellers, forming a large group of chordates. Example of vertebrate animals, we have the fishes. Fishes are vertebrate animals found in salty, fresh, cold, or even hot water. Most have scales for protection, paired fins for movement, and gills for gas exchange. They are also cold-blooded animals because of their body temperature 
changes when environment temperature changes and certain fishes do not have true teeth or maybe jawless as compared to others. And of course, we also have the amphibians. So I know you are familiar with this. Amphibians, it means double life. I know, double life from which amphibians got their name. Amphibians refers to the animals that can live in water or even in land. Examples of amphibians? Okay, so ayan yung mga examples ng mga amphibians. And we do also have the reptiles. So reptiles are animals that exhibit more adaptations for living on land. They lay eggs with shells to protect them from drying. And as you can also notice, they also have smooth or rough scales for protection from loss of body water. So, Examples of reptiles, we have the crocodiles and alligators. And another one, we have the birds. So if reptiles are adapted to land life, so most of the birds are adapted to fly. Ano, characteristics of birds, so napaka-simple, they are unable to fly. So we need to say they have the presence of wings, feathers, uh, large light muscles in the breastbone and reduce weight. Okay, examples of birds? And lastly, we have the mammals. Okay. When we say mammals, so naiba ang mammals sa ibang hayop dahil meron silang tinatawag natin na mammary glands. So mammary glands, it's sabihin, ito yung nagpuproduce ng milk para sa mga animals na to to nourish their youngs. And of course, sa uh, mammals, ma-identify natin na mammals siya kasi meron siyang balahibo o buhok. Ano? They breathe in air, have four chambered hearts, and warm blooded. So most of them also give birth to live young and care for them. The first group of mammals is what we call the monotremes. Pag sinabi natin monotremes, they lay eggs similar to those birds. Okay? Examples of monotremes, platypus and spiny anteater. And another group of mammals is what we call the marsupials. So pag sinabi naman natin marsupials, they, or, they are called as the pouch mammals. Also give birth to live young. So after birth, ang ginagawa nila ay kinikip nila yung kanilang mga uh, young sa pouches nila and nourishes with milk from mammary glands within these pouches. And may tinatawag din tayo na eutherians. So eutherians is the largest group of mammals. Ano meron naman sa eutherians? This is also known as placental mammals. They bear fully developed young animals inside the mother's uterus. Okay, examples of placenta mammals. So, papakita ko sa inyo sa table. Yeah, meron tayo siya. Examples, mga screws, moles, bats, rats, mice, squirrels, rabbits, hares, armadillos, whales, dolphins, dugong, manatee, elephants, dogs, cat, bears, seals, wal walruses, horses, zebras, rhinoceros, giraffes, carabaos, goat pigs, yan. And of course, ang ating only mammal that can fly, we have the bat. Ano? And only mammal that can swim, we have the whale and dolphins. So, mga mammal sila. This is the end of our lesson vlog about biodiversity and about the uh, taxonomic classification system. So, in our next lesson vlog, still, it's all about the biodiversity, but this time, we are going to discuss and explain uh, the difference between high diversity and low biodiversity. Okay, so I hope to see you on my next vlog. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science Speak. This is me again, Teacher Dean, your science teacher for today. Bye! Please consider subscribing bago ka mag-out. Thank you!